Today we are back at Marston Cove Marina, ready to clear out and leave New Zealand. After a season packed with working on Little Wing, Kamara and earning money, it's finally time to escape to the islands and sail north. This time we are headed for Savu Savu on Fiji's island Vanua Lefu in the north, as this will give us easy access to explore the more remote Lao Island group in the east. In this video, we take you on the passage with us and explore the rarely visited northeastern Lao Islands for some stunning and truly remote cruising. So let's go! How's the situation, Tara? You feeling okay? Yeah? Awesome. Had a nice first sleep? Cool. Now you're just chilling. Bit of a Bumpy ride, eh? Very bumpy ride. Very bumpy, but very fast. Gotta get the buff 30. Quick sticks. With this particular weather window, we had to get above 30 degrees south in the first two days to get above the next lot of strong winds. So we made the most of the wind we had for those first two days and focused on clocking some miles while we could. Good morning. What's good? What's happening? Sea dog. I just woke up. Um, gonna catch I reckon three tuna today. Dude, you're already behind. Dad's already got a line out. How many have you got out? Two. No, no, no. That's Dad's and you've got milk. Nothing. And um, lots of cats of tuna. Counting your chickens before they've hatched, dog. Um, or positive mind frame. Yeah, here, mate. Positive mental attitude. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, What's man. going on here? Do you think you're on your parents' yacht? Yes. <laughs> it's exactly what I think. Once we had caught that mahi-mahi, our dry spell on the fishing seemed to have been broken and we were back pulling in the fish each and every day. All of a sudden we were in full passage rhythm of catching fish, filleting fish, eating fresh fish and back catching more fish all whilst sailing on making our way north.
Eventually we did lose the wind for a day and had to motor through that patch of no wind. Luckily though, it wasn't too long and we were back in the wind sailing that last stretch to Savu Savu. On arrival in Savu Savu, yachts proceed to a marina just like Copra Shed to meet with the officials to do the inward clearance. Our plan was to spend as little time as possible here, so as soon as our clearance was done, we headed into shore to grab some fresh provisions at the market so we could leave again straight away. Off for a swim, eh, Tara? Yes, finally. Just a short hop away from Savo Savo is a cool little anchorage right at the point. We couldn't wait to drop our anchor and go for that long awaited first jump in the water. Usually after a passage like this, there's always a fair bit of cleaning up to do to get all the salt off and the laundry done. This time we also needed to drop our Genoa, as we noticed a few areas of the UV had come undone and so we needed to glue that back down before we did any further sailing. Pete also found a few other little areas that needed some attention, so while the sail was down, he sorted those out as well. We only spent a day smashing through our to-do list before we left for the northern Lao. Heading east into the predominant trade wind direction is never easy, so while there was little wind, we motored the first few miles of the trip and had our own little escort out of Savo Savo and what a great start to the trip. Oh, you hear him? Do you think they... <laughs> There's even more. <laughs> Look at the more up there, man. Ah, yeah? We managed to sail from afternoon through the night, arriving at our first stop in the northern Lao at Wailagilala Island the next day. Coming to a place like this, going through a pass where there aren't many detailed charts, is always a bit more challenging. The boys always keep a sharp lookout on the bow, while I follow the chart and keep a keen eye on the depth. The pass here, however, was easy. Narrow, but with plenty of depth and not much current. After spending most of the last nine days either on passage or on arrival chores, we didn't waste any time and headed straight for the beach. There's nothing like walking bare feet on a beach with nobody around, with the most amazing blues all around you. All of a sudden, we really actually arrived in Fiji properly. Lucky for us, there even was enough wind for a little kite sesh. It was a beautiful first stop on our trip to the Lao, and with only our friends on Wild Thing and us here, we had the whole place to ourselves. Days spent at the beach and beach fires at night, it really doesn't get much better than that. 
After all the boys went for an early morning spearfish mission, we decided to check out another close by spot called Duff Reef, just a couple of miles east. Leaving the pass was pretty straightforward, just like when we arrived. Once again, the details of charts for Duff Reef were pretty sketchy and required a cautionary approach. The water and visibility is so clear that even a depth of 20 meters seems much more shallow and a constant lookout for bombies is required. Duff Reef, what a place! Anchored once again in the most amazing blue water, just the two boats right in front of this huge sand key with nothing but two palm trees on it. The only inhabitants, hermit crabs and a ton of treasures to be found while beach combing. Duff Reef is a turtle sanctuary and every morning we would find fresh turtle tracks. One can appreciate the huge effort they go through to lay their eggs. While it looked so small on the charts, the sand key was massive. Every day we would walk from one end to the other beachcombing, finding all sorts of treasures and interesting finds. No internet or people around wasn't a problem for our teenagers, who always kept busy. What's happening Cameron, you're off for another session? I'm about to go shand it. One of the reasons we were so keen on coming and checking out Duff Reef was because it looked like it had serious potential to be an epic kite spot. And it turned out to be an incredible spot. So if you're into karting, the next few minutes are for you. Taking me far, far from my 
We had an absolute epic time at Duff Reef and we're so stoked we got to share it with our friends on Wild Things. But as it goes, it was time to head further south and catch up with some more of our friends. So in our next episode, we take you with us as we sail south. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.